Today we're going to look into schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is best described as a disease of the brain exhibited in the symptoms of the mind. This will make a little bit more sense as we go on and discuss some of the, the symptoms, subtypes, and uh, other issues regarding schizophrenia. So if depression is the common cold of psychological disorders, we mentioned this last time with uh, mood and anxiety disorders, schizophrenia is the cancer. Nearly 1 in 100 suffer from schizophrenia, and in the world over 24 million people suffer from the disease. It strikes young people as immature into adults. It affects men and women equally, but men suffer from it more severely from women. We see a lot of the symptoms and, and serious issues begin to emerge during the late teen years and early uh, young adult years, roughly uh, to cast a wide net anywhere from between 14 years and 25 years of age, uh, would most notably be in a, uh, a pretty narrow window of roughly 16 to 22. That's kind of the prime area of, uh, of when we'll begin to see significant schizophrenic symptoms emerge. So what are these symptoms? The literal translation of schizophrenia is that it's a split mind. It's a group of severe disorders characterized by disorganized and delusional thinking, disturbed perceptions, and inappropriate emotions and actions. So here's a quote to provide a bit of an example of the, the type of thinking that somebody may be experiencing uh, with schizophrenia. This morning when I was at Hillside Hospital, I was making a movie. I was surrounded by movie stars. I'm Mary Poppins. Is this room painted blue to get me upset? My grandmother died four weeks after my 18th birthday. So this monologue illustrates fragmented, bizarre thinking with distorted beliefs, and these distorted beliefs are called delusions, having the belief that, that, uh, that you are Mary Poppins, that you are a, a, a prominent fictional character, for example. Uh, somebody who takes on this way of thinking is uh, seeing and experiencing reality very differently than you and I. Some other forms of delusions include delusions of persecution, such as thinking that someone is following me, or delusions of grandeur, like I am a king, or I am Jesus, or I am Elvis, having this uh, idea that you are an extremely important person in the world. Many psychologists believe that disorganized thoughts occur because of selective attention failure, essentially that we have, uh, somebody with schizophrenia has these uh, fragmented and bizarre thoughts uh, because they, they, their mind cannot uh, tune to parts of the world both externally and internally essentially like to determine what's important. If you recall the selective attention section during perception uh, and uh, as well as how it's related to the idea of change blindness that we're bombarded with, with uh, data and, and stimuli in the world and our mind has to make up its, its own mind of determining what's important and what's not. What should I be paying attention to right now? What thoughts should I continue to give more attention to and uh, in order to complete my, my thinking versus uh, what should I now move on to in terms of different thoughts and not being able to filter out certain uh, thinking patterns, not being able to um, filter out stimuli from the environment is going to lead to these kind of fragmented and bizarre thoughts. An individual with schizophrenia may perceive things that are not there, such as uh, uh, they're called hallucinations. Frequently such hallucinations are auditory, but less often they're going to be visual, somatosensory, olfactory, or gustatory. Uh, people with schizophrenia most commonly report experiencing auditory hallucinations. Hearing voices, hearing chatter, uh, it, essentially it sounds similar to a radio being on in the room or a TV being on in the room but of course it's not there. An individual with schizophrenia may laugh at the news of someone dying or show no emotion at all, uh, also called em or apathy. I'm sorry. Uh, this is the portrayal of essentially inappropriate emotions and actions that somebody with schizophrenia is going to behave inappropriately for this, uh, the situation. And this doesn't necessarily have to be with a, a sexual uh, connotation here. It's just behaviors and, and emotions that are not appropriate, not expected for the situation. 
And patients with schizophrenia can continually rub an arm or rock a chair or remain motionless for hours. Uh, remaining motionless is called catatonia. Uh, the person just doesn't respond and, and has uh, uh, little uh, response to anything in the environment, whether it's a family member's voice or a direct question uh, at, at the person. It's, uh, it's a, a very troubling sight to see. So schizophrenia is a, cl a cluster of disorders, and, and it has within it several subtypes. And they share some features, but there are other symptoms that differentiate these different subtypes. And they have what we call positive and negative emotions. And this isn't a value uh, in the sense that it's good and bad symptoms or anything like that. Um, it's essentially the expression of something or the removal of expression uh, is perhaps one way to think about it. So. Uh, having hallucinations, disorganized thinking, uh, deluded ways that aren't present in normal individuals, these are positive symptoms. When you are hearing something that isn't there, when you have disorganized thinking, essentially you have you know, too many thoughts and, they're, and you can't uh, differentiate between what you should pay attention to, or thinking very highly of yourself. These are symptoms that are additions to the person's day-to-day -day experience. We imagine a, a person without schizophrenia and then add to it hallucinations, add to it delusional thinking, uh, add to it disorganized thinking. Th these are positive symptoms. Uh, but they also have an absence of appropriate symptoms. So, for example, somebody with schizophrenia experiencing apathy, not caring for anything really, uh, having a expressionless faces or rigid bodies, uh, these are negative symptoms. So we remove the care, remove the expression, remove the the fluidity of, of human motion and, and uh, movement within the environment, being very rigid and, and still not showing any expression or care. Again, these are the negative symptoms. So positive symptoms, we add things, and negative symptoms, they're taken away, essentially. When schizophrenia is slow to develop, uh, its, its recovery is doubtful. Such schizophrenics usually display negative symptoms. It's harder to, to notice when somebody is not reacting appropriately to the environment when the, when the inappropriate action is essentially inaction. You might think the person's a little quiet, they keep to themselves, they don't really bother people, they seem a little interested in their own uh, occurrences. This is uh, why it can be so difficult to pick up on anything being wrong. Uh, it could easily be attributed to a person being introverted. Uh, however, when somebody is asking, did you hear that, or they start talking to themselves because they're answering a voice, uh, when they start getting those positive symptoms, we can usually pick up on it a bit sooner and, uh, and kind of raise some red flags and, and try to get the person some help um, earlier on. When it rapidly develops, recovery is better. And again, uh, such schizophrenics usually show uh, positive symptoms. So the different subtypes of schizophrenia, we have uh, paranoid schizophrenia uh, with uh, these uh, delusions are often centered around um, persecution or grandiosity that the, the world is out to get you. Um, a Beautiful Mind is a wonderful movie that highlights uh, uh, what it's like to have paranoid schizophrenia. Disorganized schizophrenia is simply disorganized speech or behavior or flat or inappropriate emotion. It's just very difficult to follow where the person is, is going and, and, uh, and you know where they're going to steer a conversation with you. Catatonic schizophrenia uh, includes immobility, extreme negativism, and uh, or parrot-like repeating of another speech or movement. Again, negativism isn't necessarily like like being mean or you're a bad person or anything like that. Um, it's just the removal of, uh, of, of human experiences. Undifferentiated could be just a variety of the different symptoms. And then residual, uh, a person who's withdrawn um, after hallucinations and delusions have, uh, have disappeared. They, they, they're kind of coming out of uh, uh, the experience of schizophrenia, of, of so many of the positive symptoms. The likelihood of individuals suffering from schizophrenia is a, is a uh, fifty percent if their identical twin has the disease. So it shows a, a strong genetic uh, linkage to uh, schizophrenia being being based on on some sort of genetic factor. 
and psychological and environmental factors can trigger schizophrenia if the individual was genetically predisposed. So if, if it's possible that uh, it runs in the family and the person is placed in a stressful environment, an unpredictable environment, they're raised by people with schizophrenia and um, it's, they're very unpredictable and difficult to, to follow in uh, day-to-day activities, uh, that's going to be more likely to bring about, to kind of trigger the, uh, the presence of schizophrenia. Some early warning signs include a mother's long-lasting schizophrenia, again having a family member who's had it for a very long time, um, having birth complications, oxygen deprivation, low birth weight, short attention span and, and poor muscle coordination, disruptive and withdrawn behavior, and emotional unpredictability. Now, a lot of these may sound like, oh, I can think of a few people who have uh, some of these. But, we, but with schizophrenia, these are going to be warning signs and will lead to the consideration of the presence of the disorder uh, when working with a psychologist. The, uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that this person, a child, uh, may have it, but, uh, or for sure has it, but that it's going to be one of those kind of thoughts that uh, a psychologist will for sure consider when uh, deciding what may be going on within that person. And lastly, poor peer relations and solo play, uh, something that's a hallmark for a lot of issues for kids. I want to jump on to dissociative identity disorder for just a few slides just to differentiate between this and uh, schizophrenia because they often get confused with one another. So dissociative disorder is uh, uh, this conscious awareness becomes separated or dissociated from previous memories, thoughts, and feelings. It's kind of this splitting experience of, uh, of your, the way you remember yourself and others around you just kind of detaches and you become kind of somebody else for the moment. Um, the person often senses uh, things being unreal, being separated from the body, or watching themselves as in a movie. This is, this is just the first step of, of stepping out, of uh, kind of detaching from the moment. This is different from dissociative identity disorder, as I mentioned before. I want to cover this just because it's uh, important to, to consider this kind of removal from the present before we look into identity development. So somebody with dissociative disorder it, the watching themselves as in a movie is really a, a great descriptor for what it's like to have dissociative disorder. That you're kind of out of yourself, sort of, and, and things are just more happening to you, and there, it seems like there's very little you can do because you've detached. And so dissociative identity, dis identity disorder is when uh, a person exhibits two or more distinct and alternating personalities. It used to be called multiple personality disorder. So when somebody uh, detaches and, in, and in fact begins the new development of, of another identity uh, with a different name, perhaps a different life history, different uh, personal interests and romantic styles and all of that, that's when uh, uh, somebody begins to take on multiple personalities and they develop this disorder of dissociative identity disorder. So not to be confused again with schizophrenia, which I've uh, described thus far, this is a very distinct disorder. So some critics argue that the diagnosis of DID has uh, increased in the late 20th century, uh, perhaps because it's, it's interesting and popular, it's in movies, and so is that leading uh, the, the uh, diagnosticians to actually going into creating the diagnosis and to seeing it more frequently and you know uh, uh, looking for it in places perhaps it didn't exist. Um, and also, it's not generally been found in other countries, at least outside the United States. So uh, the, the, the belief of whether it exists or not, based on scientific data, is pretty sketchy. So the critics' arguments include that uh, role-playing by people are, uh, are open to therapist suggestion. So they, it could be that somebody is just taking on whatever the therapist is throwing at them and saying, yeah, that's me that could also be this other person and uh, and they kind of describe themselves in multiple ways and kind of fools a therapist into thinking that the person is talking about several people within one body. And lastly, uh, learn, the learned response reinforces reductions in anxiety that if I always behave in a way that's different from me and that reduces my anxiety, I'm going to behave in that way that's not me uh, over and over again in order to reduce that anxiety. And that doesn't necessarily mean you've developed another, another identity. But again, how you experience the world and how you interact with others can kind of seem like that.
Well, that's all we got for today. Kind of a, a real quick run through of schizophrenia and uh, some dissociative disorders. Uh, we'll begin to look into psychological treatment in the next lectures. So until then, bye-bye.